You're live on now with Stacey Washington, and I'm welcoming into the show Will Hild. He's Executive Director of Consumers Research. Will, thanks for coming on. Great to be with you. So let's talk about these climate people. They're always giving us so much to talk about. They've suffered a major blow, and I love good news, Will. Please give us what you have. Absolutely. Well, last week in a pretty startling and obviously coordinated decision, J.P. Morgan Chase, State Street Asset Managers, and BlackRock Asset Managers all left a group called Climate Action 100. And this is basically a climate cartel of asset owners who push corporate America to go after so-called net zero targets, which sound nice, but really what that translates into is higher prices at the pump and the grocery store for everyday consumers because they make it more expensive to produce the goods and services that, that we enjoy. So this is great news. This is comes on the heels of pushback from a number of different Republican attorney generals, legislatures, and uh, governors. So this is in response to activity on the right, but it's, it's, it's great news. It's fantastic news, and hopefully more will follow suit. So the the key here is for people who are watching and they're thinking, okay, this is good news, but how do we replicate this in other areas? It's similar to me. I know it's not a direct corollary, but it, it kind of feels a little bit like what happened with Bud Light when they decided to use um, a new marketing team who were against frat boys and, you know, beer is kind of a frat boy thing. And for dads who push lawnmowers and operate grills on the weekends, you know, basically regular people. And they went against their core audience. And it sounds like these companies are realizing that their shareholders and their core consumers don't line up with the ESG paradigm. That's 100% correct. And to be clear, none of these companies wanted to do this. They all joined Climate Action 100 with lots of fanfare and plaudits from the New York Times and the Washington Post. This is embarrassing for them to have to walk that back. The only reason they're doing it is because of the pushback from conservatives and from people in the middle who don't want corporate America you know, dictated by uh, far left asset managers. So they, they are not happy about this. And to be clear, we're going to have to keep pushing on them because this isn't you know, this isn't like they got a new CEO, CEO who doesn't believe any of this stuff and, and is trying to back out of it. They are, we are pushing them back. This is trench warfare. And we're going to have to keep the pressure on in order to keep, keep, uh, keep making progress. And this isn't the only group they're a member of. They're a member of something called Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero, which also pushes for, for, for Net Zero targets. But Climate Action 100 was one of the most coordinated and one of the most active. So getting them out of that organization is a huge step forward. It's huge progress. And it sends a signal to all the smaller asset managers. Because like State Street and BlackRock, they're the number one and number th third largest asset managers. There's hundreds of members of Climate Action 100. So a lot of people joined because they saw the big ones joining and thinking, oh, well, this is what everyone's doing. So having them leave is, is huge progress. But again, we, we can't rest on our laurels. We have to keep marching forward. And so marching forward really is a coordinated effort. Obviously, Consumers Research does the heavy lifting for us out here as consumers, but there are things that we can do. What are your suggestions for people who are watching who really want to be involved and have a hand in seeing this happen again? That's, that's a great question. So uh, the number one thing is to call your elected representatives, whether that's your state senator, state uh, uh, congressman, uh, attorney general, your treasurers have been very active in this space. Call your, your governor, Republican or Democrat, and let them know you don't want your state's money being pushed, uh, used to push ESG and, and net zero. Um, this is happening you know, across the country. And, and the, the big uh, asset managers, the way they got so large was by hoovering up state, local, and federal pension funds. So it's really our money. It's our state's endowments, uh, university endowments, that's using to push this stuff. And when politicians hear from you that you care about this, even though I know it's a very wonky issue, it's got this bizarre acronym. It has to do with you know what banks and, and, and Wall Street asset managers are doing. But when they hear from you that you want something done, it encourages them to, to keep the pressure on. The second thing is, is make sure that your own money isn't being used for this. So make sure that your own 401k isn't invested in, in BlackRock uh, funds. Move them, move them out of that into a better asset manager. And lastly, if you are a member of any kind of state pension fund, if you're a retired teacher, fireman, police officer, make sure that your pension fund, whether you're in a red state or a blue state, it doesn't matter. Make sure that the, the, your state's pension funds aren't being used to invest in this way. And consider you know, calling your pension, if they are, make sure to call your pension representative, your trustees, and let them know you don't want it to be used to, to push a far left politics. All of these fronts, are, are attack surfaces that BlackRock and other asset managers have to defend from. And they are retreating. So we, we are making gains and they are making losses. We just need to keep the pressure on. 
So let's talk now about the the actual, because I, I like to go into a few facts whenever we're talking about climate and how it intersects with oil and natural gas industry. That is a huge backbone in our society. The oil and natural gas industry is just as important to Americans as our healthcare apparatuses, as our uh, public safety apparatuses. It is that important because most of the products that we use in our homes are actually derived from petroleum products. And for people who don't believe me, maybe you think I'm just, you know, I'm an anti-climate nut. I kind of am, but that's regardless of the fact that this is something that you're literally probably touching right now. If you're holding a phone or watching this on a television, the plastic that encases your screen comes from petroleum. And also we're talking about cosmetics, medications, things that you rub on your body, things that are integral to you living your life are all derived from petroleum products. I, I actually didn't know the depth of it until, well, I, we, we saw the, uh, we went to Galveston, Texas, and there's an Oceana. The Oceana oil rig is a decommissioned oil rig that is now moored in the Galveston Bay. It's a huge, um, it's like a museum. You get to go inside and see how oil riggers live. And they have all of these huge dioramas so that you can see the ocean floor and how we actually pull resources out of the ocean floor. And they give examples of all the products in your home that are derived from oil. And I walked out of there even more of a, you know, anti-climatologist, if you will. I just believe that people don't understand what they're actually fighting here. Can you close this out? Because I, I want people to really have a clear understanding of that. Yeah, absolutely. When you are attacking the fossil fuel industry, you're not just attacking the gasoline that you put in your car to get to work. You are making it harder to uh, grow our foods. That all comes from synthetic fertilizers made with natural gas. So you're raising prices at the grocery store. Every, every one of, of your consumer electronic products is made with petroleum. The tires on your car include petroleum. Uh, it's hard to actually find products these days that aren't derived, at least in part, as petroleum products. So when you make that more expensive, and that's what, to be clear, that's what these asset managers and big banks like JP Morgan Chase were doing. They were trying to raise the cost of, of, of fossil fuel uh, discovery and recovery. You are making every single thing that you buy more expensive. And in a period of, of record inflation, at least in the last three, four decades, that's hardly what the American consumer needs. So this is a great news. This is great progress. We need to keep the pressure on these big banks and these big asset managers to get out of the business of politics and just focus on making money for their clients. And that focus will make it possible for Americans to really experience the wonderful society we've always had. Will Heil from Consumers Research, you're amazing. Thanks for joining me on the show today. Thanks for having me. All right, we'll be back with more now with Stacey Washington after this. Mm -hmm.